We are here for day two of our open-ended strike, our first open-ended strike here in Southern California. It's a great day. It's beautiful. We have so many people here. I'm stoked to be here. We are here first and foremost fighting for our patients. This is my third strike with Kaiser. First open-ended, but third strike nonetheless. Each time we're here, we're fighting for our patients. Better access, being able to keep our staff here at Kaiser. I couldn't tell you the number of times I've met somebody and then less than six months later, they're gone. Um, our patients are really needing us. They're wanting to see us consistently, see us regularly, and we still are not able to provide that for them. So that's why we're here. I've been here almost 15 years, and as I've been here, the longer I'm here, the harder this has gotten. When I get a patient who walks in my door, first time they're here with us, here for an intake, they, they open up, they say, I haven't come to therapy, I've been wanting to work on this for years and years. They sit down in your office, we build this rapport, we connect with them, and they're ready, they're ready to do this work. And then I look at my calendar and I say, oh, my next appointment is in four weeks. Four weeks, you can see the devastation on their face. And it's painful, it's painful as a clinician to say I don't have an appointment available for four weeks, sometimes five weeks, sometimes six weeks. How, how are they going to trust us with the work that they want to do when they can't see us but once a month or once every six weeks? That is the hardest part for me as a clinician, knowing that I know we can give better care, I know we can do better, I know we can see our patients consistently, and yet I've got this patient sitting across from me who's just opened up, they're crying, they're sharing about their lifelong challenges, their lifelong journey, um, and I can't help them until four weeks from now. The worst part of my job is trying to find when your next appointment's gonna be because I know it's not gonna be soon enough. I know it's not gonna be when you need it, and I know I'm not gonna be able to provide the therapy that you deserve. Unfortunately, I've had several patients come in who had a family member commit suicide relatively recently. Uh, I do their intake, I sit with them, I talk with them. A month later, I see them, and they're a little bit worse. A month later, I see them a second time, they're a little bit worse. And I know how complicated grief is. I just lost my father-in-law late last year. My mom just passed about six weeks ago. Grief is complicated. You come to therapy, I would go to therapy, to talk consistently with someone about sadness and anger, guilt, frustration, disappointment, all these things that we feel. And to hold that for a month and then have to talk about it and then try to remember all the things that you felt, it's painful. Grief itself is painful enough. And then I have to wait to talk to somebody um, where you can open up and then wait again and then open up and then wait again. That process is painful. And I know we can do better. Um, our clinicians want to do better. 